In this video overview, we're going to look at some of the options you've got for administrating toolpaths. We've already opened a part here that has some toolpaths calculated in it. The preparation of data and the actual calculation and output of toolpaths will be covered in detail during the machining tutorials. Within the toolpath list, we can see the names of the toolpaths we calculated and a small icon showing the shape of the tool. If we hover over that little picture there, then what it's going to do is pop up a tool tip that'll show us the name of the tool that was selected for that toolpath. Here we have the checkboxes so we can show that toolpath or hide the toolpath within the 2D and 3D view. If we click here, the checkbox for the 3D roughing, we can see that in the 3D view, but only toolpaths that have a 2D component will be shown in the 2D view. So if I was to go ahead and check the profile, we'll see that shows up in the 3D view and we also see this line with the arrows on it in the 2D view showing us that there. Another way to visualize 2D toolpaths within the 2D view is to choose the solid option and that's actually going to shade the area that's going to be cut with that tool. And that's very useful for checking how tightly into corners the tool you've selected is going to get as we can see here as that comes around the top of the banner we can see the radius that that tool is going to leave. Within the list if we want to we can change the order by selecting a toolpath and clicking the arrow to move it up or down in the list and that could be important especially if you have an automatic tool changer because it will output the toolpaths within the order they are in the list. If we click on this icon here, that'll bring up the floating toolpath control menu. Within here you can see I can still go ahead and switch on and off the visualization for the toolpaths. I can put in notes for a specific toolpath and I can also go ahead and change the name of it here, hit apply and hide that. Coming down into the toolpath operations, we have all the icons for controlling the toolpaths and for creating them. The first here is very important because this allows you to set up your material and your rapid clearance gaps. Then we have various 2D toolpaths along the top row here, profile, pocket, drilling and engrave. On the next row we have what are known as 2.5D toolpaths, V-carve, fluting, texture, prism carving and then the automatic inlay tool for cutting out parts that you need to inlay into a pocket or for creating the pockets to inlay a part into. On the next row we have the 3D toolpaths, the roughing and the finishing and then we have various administration tools. We have edit toolpaths, if we want to edit the parameters for a toolpath we can either select it and click on this icon or you can just come up to the toolpath list and double click it as well. The next icon allows you to make a copy of your selected toolpath and the icon following that will allow you to delete any selected toolpath in the list. The final icon on that row would let you force a recalculation of all toolpaths. For instance, you may change the material size, in which case you may need to recalculate all the toolpaths to take that into account. On the next row we have the tool database, which is what stores all the tools and the specifications for the tools you have. You can add the tools in here and make various changes to the parameters you have set up. Then we have the toolpath templates, we can load and save and save all visible toolpaths as a template and then the tile toolpaths which allows you to take a part which may be too big to cut on your machine or a piece of material and tile the toolpaths up into smaller pieces so that you can machine them and perhaps index the material through in order to cut the next tile. On the last row we have the ability to preview the toolpaths which we'll look at in a second we can estimate machining times, save the toolpaths and an icon to go back to the drawing tab. Now coming back to the icon to estimate machining times, this can be a useful tool. If we click on it, what it's going to do is give you an estimate of the time it's going to take to cut those toolpaths on your machine. Now this estimate is purely based on the length of the toolpath and the feeds and speeds that you've specified. So it can't possibly take into account things like the acceleration and deceleration of your machine or other factors that may influence the actual cutting time. But it can be useful to give you a general idea of how long the part's going to take to cut 
and there is a way to go ahead and actually tweak the time so that you can get it to become more accurate the more times that you actually use this and as long as you make a note of how long things take to machine. You can see we have this parameter for the scale factor. If I set that to 1 and go ahead and look at the times that it's estimating, it's telling me that based on the feeds and speeds and length of the toolpath, it thinks I'm going to have a total machining time of just over two hours, and then it breaks down the time for the rough, the finish, the v-carve, and the profile. If I go ahead and run this on my machine and make a note of how long the toolpaths actually take to cut, and perhaps that's closer to, say, three hours, then I would need to come back and change the scale factor to be something like 1.5 and then that's going to give me a more accurate estimate next time I use this. Over time you're going to find that you may need to have different scale factors depending on the type of toolpath you're working with. For instance, your machine may cut differently when it's cutting mainly 3D work to how it might perform when it's cutting mainly 2D profiles or doing v-carving. Another very important icon here is the ability to preview the toolpaths. If we click on that, it will take us into a special preview menu, and in the 3D view, it's going to show us an imaginary block of material. If we just maximize that now, what this allows you to do is select the toolpaths from the list, and you can go ahead and preview what the part's actually going to look like when that toolpath's cut on the machine. If I click on the button to preview the toolpath, we can see the roughing being cut into the job there, and I can see the result of it after that toolpath has been run. There are various options in here to define whether you see a little animation of the tool or not, uh, which is going to determine how fast the preview may run. We also have the um, VCR style controls here to play this or to go uh, single step or to run to the next retract. Typically they can be useful if you're working with a lot of profile cuts or something where you want to see the progress of the tool or the order that it's cutting in. You may just go ahead and select the toolpaths that you want to see previewed and preview them one at a time. So I'll select the finishing there, we'll go ahead and preview that so we can see the result of that. We'll click on the v-carve now and it's also possible within the preview to assign a color to the area that's machined away. So for this v-carve what I may do is come down and say that I want to use a toolpath color for it and we'll choose something like uh, dark green color and go ahead and say preview and then we can see the area that's cut by that tool is going to be filled with that color. And I can see up in the toolpath list that it's put a small square, which is also the color that we've selected there. It's a little difficult to see that's the green, but if I went ahead and selected something like the orange color, we can easily see that square displayed up in the toolpath list. So that's another option for customizing how my part will look once I've run the preview over it. If we go ahead and select the profile and preview that now. We have another option once we're done previewing that if we've completely cleared around the part and cut all the way through the material, we can click to delete waste material in order to get rid of the excess stock. And this allows us to go ahead and say view, save shaded image, and I could send that exact image to my customer to show them precisely what they're going to get when we finish cutting the part on the machine. Once we exit the preview, we can see we go back to the regular 3D view which is displaying our components. And that concludes this short overview on administrating toolpaths.